Click. Hello everyone, this is Take from BigHeadTalker.com and I am here from my garage to do a quick overview of the Leica M8. Now I am taking this camera with me to Hong Kong and I'll explain in another video why I'm taking it with me other than the fact that I always take uh, a couple of cameras to review while I'm on a trip. But uh, this one specifically I asked for, for a reason but I am going to be shooting uh, a lot of film on this trip and so I wanted either the Leica MP, the M7 or the MA and it didn't really matter which one I got and so Leica sent me the MA and so the biggest difference between the uh, the three that I mentioned so those are the three I don't think they're the only three maybe they are currently available Leica film cameras the M cameras but the M7 uses an electronic shutter and there are some electronics to it, but uh, it is still a, a film camera. And the MP and the MA are a lot alike. Uh, the biggest difference being that the MP has a built-in light meter, a TTL light meter, and the MA has no light meter. So uh, the MP, even though it has a light meter, even without batteries, it will work just like an MA. So let's just say you don't want to use a light meter or your battery dies, you can still shoot with it, but you have to find another device so that you can meter or you're just very good at guessing your exposure if you use basically you're under the same type of light all the time and you only shoot a single speed of film like you always shoot ISO 400 you always shoot ISO 100 then pretty much you can probably guess within a few stops of what the actual exposure should be but uh, fully mechanical um, no batteries is basically gears and springs and there's a shutter, you know, a mount. I mean, basically a film camera, uh, especially a mechanical film camera, you can't really review the camera in the sense of seeing the type of image quality because basically the image quality is based on the lens and the film you're using. There's very little that a camera body can influence the actual image quality. Now, the only thing, the only time I can think of where it can affect is there was a unique camera called the Contax RTS3 and it actually had a vacuum on the back plate, on the film plate. And so at the moment of exposure, it actually would suction cup the film as flat as possible, including sort of like sometimes the edges would come up a little bit. So there is a plate that pushes uh, the film up against uh, to keep it as flat as possible, but sometimes there is a bit of a curl and the RTS3 had a thing where it's a vacuum plate and it kind of made it I think it was the RTS3 if it wasn't I'll correct it down here But I'm pretty sure but it was contacts and um, Anyways, it kept it flat and that was one of the things it claimed and I saw some magazines where it did show the edges were slightly sharper But other than that basically you're reviewing the lens or the film and so on here uh, And for my trip to Hong Kong, I will be bringing the Leica 35mm f1.4 Sumalux and I am bringing for film I'll be taking the uh, Fujifilm Pro 400H and the 100 Acros so people have sort of been more aware of the Acros and Neopan Acros 100 because of the new film profile in the X-Pro2 and the upcoming X-T2 but the, this is an actual film that you can shoot with so I'll be shooting with this as well as with this in Hong Kong so I thought I would go over a bit about uh, how this works and I do have my um, Minolta CLE with me here. It feels like this is half the weight because there's lots of plastic in here and this does take a battery. This is fully mechanical and so there are technically fewer things to go wrong with it. Now aesthetically it's a lot like the MP. It's gone back to the, so if you own an M2 or an M3 it has the smaller shutter speed dial. They kind of went larger a little bit later on. So the classic M6, you know, has the larger wheel and the M5 had the really weird one that wrapped around the shutter uh, release button. But this is smaller and as well, uh, as you go up in speed, you're actually turning it clockwise. Where the newer ones go the other way, where you turn it counterclockwise going up in shutter speed. So all the new Fuji films follows that the the newer uh, counterclockwise to go shutter speed up this is the reverse so you kind of have to remember that because there's no light meter in here to tell you so as you're shooting you can't see in here what's happening so you need to kind of always look up to see what your shutter speed is um, another thing is it's a one piece uh, shutter um, trigger I, what, what, I you know what I don't even know what they call this the uh, crank 
Anyway, so it's, a, it's a one piece, and so it feels very fast and stable. Uh, they've gone back to the old, uh, just the churn knob style. I don't mind it because I don't shoot a lot of film, but some guys, they like the newer one that's off to an angle and you have the little crank there. And so the reason why I like it is it has the red dot. So as you spin it, as you crank it, you can see the film advancing so you know that it's advancing. So I like that. Um, there's very little play in the shutter. Sometimes I find, especially with the Fujis, I know it's, it's, a, it's a digital camera, so all it has to do is touch some kind of a, I don't know, a, a trigger or switch down below. But this, you know, this feels like it's going straight down. There's no kind of a sideways kind of a play. And I found even on some of the digital Leicas that there is a little bit of a play. And over time, this might kind of start moving, but this is solid. It goes sh uh, straight down. Another thing is, unlike the older Leica M's, like the M2 and the M3, uh, when you pull your film out, um, your counter, it automatically resets to zero. Actually, it goes to, um, it goes up to 40 frames, I think, but it goes to like minus. It goes a little bit minus so that you can crank it three or four times and then it finally it goes to zero and then you start shooting and then it counts up. So uh, typically you get, if, you, if it catches the right point, it typically catches and you'll get about 37 to 38 frames on a 36 roll. And um, what I have in here, so I have been playing and there actually is film in here. Once you get used to shooting film, you know there's a certain tension that you can get in the, when you crank it. So I know there's film in here, but I use a, uh, as I call like a dummy film, just one second here. I always have a few of these dummy films. I have to sacrifice a roll, I know, um, but uh, it's so that when I test cameras, uh, I want to see if the spool, if it catches on correctly. And, uh, and so, you know, I have two or three or four. I mean, I'm, I've been shooting film for a long time now, over 25 years or even longer. But um, uh, you always have, you know, I usually put on here test so that I know that it hasn't, you know, that I can't use it for anything. And so I do have a test roll in here. So I'm going to just show you um, how you load and unload. Maybe I'll even get right to the, the very end. So you can see here as you're shooting, it's advancing. You can see the, can you see the advance there? So it's advancing. Let's just see how far. So there you go. That's as far as I can go. And then so you hit the little release here. So it releases, right? And, um, oh, another quick thing here. If you noticed, I always had the, the uh, control grip on the Leica CLE, and I mentioned it in my other MA review from two years ago, that uh, it just coincidentally fits onto the MA. So there is no, I mean, there might be an MA uh, grip, but this isn't it. This is actually from the um, Minolta uh, CLE, so pretty darn cool. So, so you're at the end, you have to hit release, and you will then just start spinning this. And you can feel uh, the uh, resistance or the tension here. And since the film, so never do this, okay, never do this. But since the film is a dummy film, I'll actually show you. This is probably something you, you rarely see, is as I am reversing. So here, you know, this, this opens up. You can see the film right in there like that. But as I rewind as i wind this back you can actually see can you see that you can see the film in the spool right so it's, i'm just taking it all out and let's just keep on turning it i counted i think it's about 70 turns so i can see if you shoot a lot of film um, you'll get kind of calloused fingers which is all right for me because i'm a guitarist and my left hand is always calloused from my strings anyways and it's getting near the end, and you could probably even see it there. Or maybe it's not. Let's just see here. Keep on spinning. So you can see why guys like motor drives back in the old film days. Um, auto, so here we go. There you go, see that? It came off the spool. And here it is at the back here. You can see how it's coming off. Um, I won't take it all out, because I'm gonna then reload it again for you. But, so that's pretty much how it works. And you can even see how the shutter is half half cocked there, right? So um, hit that to zero. And here you can see that it is at minus three, right? So you can see the 40 there. And so when you every time you open it and close it, it resets to 40. And I think the reset counter, I think that's probably it right there. This is what's actually spinning and resetting it. And this is how the bottom plate, I mean, minus the grip that I bought, that I got from a CLE. This is kind of how the bottom plate looks like from there, so it's a brass top and bottom, so it's nice and heavy. 
Uh, it has the matte paint on it, so it looks very stealthy. The MP, I think it says Leica up here. The, the MA is so stealth that the only place where you can actually see it is right on the flash shoe uh, attachment that you can see it says MA there. That's the only place where it says it. And from the back, uh, like my MD review, you look at it from the back, it, the MA and the MD from the back looks almost identical. The only way you could tell that, that the MD is digital is that it doesn't have the little uh, the spool here to rewind, to rewind the film. Uh, and uh, what else? And also the, uh, the crank here, right? So, so that is a dead giveaway that this is film. What I want to do now is to show you how to load film into a Leica M. Now the older M's, like the M2 and the M3, um, had the spools that came out and you had to put them both, like the film on to the spool and then you kind of push it in. I like, some guys like the older ones, the older style with the double spool, I this makes more sense. So it's just like a little uh, built-in spool with like three little jagged arms. And the film, basically, so you would drop it in. Now everyone will probably have their own sort of slight modified style, but my style is, uh, you know, pull it out enough so that uh, it can curl in. So maybe it's out just a little bit too much. And uh, this is what I was talking about, the, the back plate uh, of... Um, the film camera if this back plate is not aligned correctly or was not designed well this will affect the sharpness of your image and so that uh, unique there's a bit of a spring on here too so that it will keep it as flat as possible and that contacts camera had that little vacuum on there to keep it really flat right but here it's a cloth focal plane shutter as well and um, here maybe I'll even show you as you as you crank the shutter here so as you crank it all right so there you go so that's cranked and then you shoot, right? And then you crank it. And we'll, we'll pick a slow, you know what, let's even go to bulb here. So when you go to bulb, bulb means it'll stay open as long as you hold it open. And I'll pick a large aperture here, so I'll even be able to look through. And there you go, right? And that's how it works. And if I pick a slower shutter speed, like to say um, uh, quarter, quarter second here, you can see it and ready, and there you go, right? You can even hear that little funny, gear sound so you start hearing that gear sound around um i think a 15th of a second so let's just see here nope 15th of a second you can hear the clear um click click like that and if you go to 30th let's hear that it, it's very quick but about 15th where you hear it very clearly like that and then you go to eighth and you can hear slightly that gear you go to quarter second you can really hear it half second there you go. And then one second, you can really hear it. Hear that? So, you know, you do kind of, your ears do get used to it. So again, 30th, you can sort of, you can hear it go click up like very quickly. And when you go to a 60th, it's very fast. You can almost feel it more than hear it. Like that. So it is two consecutive click up like that. It's very quick though. And then when you get to 1 125th, you can't hear it anymore. And then 1 250th. Like that it sounds almost the same it's slightly different but it feels different one five hundred there you go and then the top shutter speed one one thousand there you go and then there is a flash sync here so maximum flash sync is one fiftieth of a second so it's not very fast but it is limited by gears and springs and mechanics so um anyways let's go back to loading the film so here is the film uh you pop it here and so you can see the teeth Okay, again, I think I have too much film sticking out, so let's pull this back a bit. So you typically, when you get your film, it'll be like this, right? About that much film is what's going to be given to you. So you open the back here. You make sure there's no dust in here. Make sure everything's clean. You pull it through here, and you can see right in there the little teeth, right? So you kind of have to make sure that it goes in enough. So again... It's already dropped in here, so yeah, so make sure it's not all the way in so that you can sort of follow it into one of the teeth, like that. I'm gonna, here, let me just stand here. Um, this is difficult because I'm trying to show you at the same time. So yeah, there you go. And so once it goes into the teeth, right, then you push it in. So you know that the film, so it should be riding along that railing here, so that rail then. So it's, 
writing there. And once it's there, I typically will close it and hold this down. And then I will, so I'm showing you from my perspective, but I would typically then as I crank it like this, so you can help do a close up here. See that? You could see it catching and I think it did catch, right? There you go. And then after I crank once and I can see that it caught, then I will put the back, the, the, the bottom plate on. But here, just for the sake of this, I'll show you like that. So you can see that? So you can see how it's cranking there, right? There you go. Like that. So let's just say, so typically you'll do it till about three. Once it catches, I can see that it got caught. I will then put uh, the uh, bottom plate on right away. And so you just put that there. It's a little bit more complicated. And then also make sure that this lip here, make sure that that lip, you know, don't close it so that it's like this. Because what happens is you close it and now, you know, you're exposed in the back, right? So you're gonna make sure, that's the, the most complicated part here is make sure that, that this, this stays down, right? So not like this and having this left open, right? But having it under and then you turn it 180 and it's closed. And then here you, you see the crank there. So again, it's at minus, you know, minus three. So you just go one, two, three, right? So now you're, you're ready at one, right? But anyways, now you're ready to shoot. Um, you can see this part here spinning. If you want to make sure it's caught, if it spins, the two little red dots, then you know that it's, uh, that it's caught on and you're ready to shoot. And here, so like, unlike the Leica MD, this actually changed the ISO of the camera because there was a digital camera. With film, you do not change the ISO mid-roll. I mean, even when you push or pull process, you make sure that you put it at the ISO that you want it to. Because this is a fully mechanical, no metering at all, um, this is just so that you will remember what film you put in here. So, And that's pretty much it. You're shooting with the mechanical uh, film camera. Uh, the Leicas... Um, as I mentioned, with this one, you just have to remember that clockwise is you going up. And then Leicas are very easy because they put the aperture um, the aperture in the front. So a lot of the newer digital cameras that have manual focus and apertures, the aperture ring is pushed right up against the body. So the Fujifilm X100T is a perfect example where you can't see it unless you look straight down. This one here, even from here like that, now I can already see the aperture. So I just have to, I have to look up here, look at aperture, look straight down. And if you know your your shutter speeds and where you're at, um, when you hit 1 1,000th, you can't go, it doesn't accidentally go to bulb. So if you want maximum shutter speed and you're shooting, you don't know where you're at, you can go all the way and you know you're a 1,000 and you go down one, you know at 500th, now I'm on 1 250th, 1 1 25th, because these are all in full stops and these are all in half stops. And that's very uh, Leica-esque. All the Leica lenses that I know of are in half stops and all the shutter speeds on the mechanical film cameras are all in full stop. So it's kind of easy to remember that way. Um, as I mentioned, the big difference with the uh, the older M2 and the M3s, which is this is a lot like in that it's fully mechanical, is that uh, this resets where the M2 and the M3, you have to manually reset it. Um, those cameras also had a single uh, crank here, so that a lot of guys like Some guys like the other two-piece. Um, I don't mind it, but this does feel faster and more solid when you're when you're spinning, when you're cranking like this. It just feels more solid. Uh, there is no diopter. Um, the one thing that I would like on the MA, as I mentioned on the last time I reviewed it, was I would like to have a lock here. So it'll just lock the shutter. Um, it's kind of a natural habit to, as soon as you finish shooting something like this, you just kind of automatically crank it and you're ready for the next shot. You have to remember if you're always going in and out of a camera bag to when you, once you finish, then don't crank it. Because if you do crank it and then you put it in your bag and you put a, a soft release on here, you'll always be shooting these blank frames. And so that's not good. So just like if you can, you know, this is almost perfect as a fully mechanical camera. If you could put a lock on you because there's no way of turning this on or off, if you could find a way of locking this, then when you need to shoot with it, then you just have to unlock it. Just a mechanical lock there would be great if you can somehow figure it out. So again, I just, uh, like I said, this is not a review because this can't really do anything other than uh, 
take pictures. It's a light tight box. Uh, the frame lines I forgot to mention it's a 0.72 times uh, magnification so you do get the uh, 28 mil wide so it, it couples so you can see the lines in here so it has the 28 which is pretty much edge to edge if you're wearing glasses I don't think you can see to the edge of the 28 and then in the middle is I think 90 and then if you pull it over here yeah. so be 35 so I'm in 35 sorry 35 and 135 right and then the 50 and the 75 frame lines and so that's you know you can choose that there but when you put the lens on it automatically picks the right one for you so on my um, next video I'll explain why I'm bringing uh, the Leica MA you know non-digital camera and shooting film why why am I doing it so uh, I'll explain in my next video why uh, but if you follow me on Twitter and on Instagram and I also have a special um, project a crowdfunding project uh, that again just go to my website if you want more details but I kind of give hints in there as well of why and you can sort of figure it out but if not just wait for my next video and explain exactly why I'm shooting uh, this mechanical camera but it's going to be a lot of fun this camera could have come out in 1950 and no one would have batted an eye because this is the type of camera you would have expected to come out in 1950 but it's being released in the 2010s which seems so backwards uh, but uh, that is like and this is what they're famous for so for forty two hundred dollars US you get a fully mechanical film camera I want to talk a little bit um, if I have time I might just edit this out but these weird Leica straps um, I'm not a fan of this nylon type strap and I don't like this grippy I mean it says Leica there and I think these aren't that cheap either but the beauty of these are um, it's the it's the um, it's the clips here the clip here has this funny kind of a U shape because of it it's easy to release like look how easy it is like that and it's out and so if you're in a habit of removing these taking these things on and off all the time i find that the leica is so you make sure you line up you know like for instance you make sure it's lined up the way you want it to go on so it doesn't matter which way it faces but once you figure it out you basically slide it in and now it's in and then you reverse the position like that and then this plastic clip goes and it covers over that sharp part like that and it clips in and now it's in so it's the quickest way of taking the strap on and off and i'm already thinking in hong kong um, other than i take the only reason why i take straps off is usually because i want to take a picture of it but other than that um, if i do need to take it on and off quickly i might as ugly as this is it's very functional and i think that's the whole git of the ma is that um, it's so plain like the it reminds me a lot of the uh, like uh, the the m246 monochrome in that there's no I don't think that that camera had any I mean it says very I'm not sure if you can see it there but it says like a camera Wetzler made in Germany along the back but it's in black so you can't you know you can't really see it the matte black paint I mean there's absolutely no marking on this other than again on the hot shoe there so uh, it's a very plain looking camera so in a utilitarian way this strap goes really well and with this grip too um, it, i think it's really functional for this camera so uh, let's just see how this goes uh, i'll talk to you at least one more time if not two more times before i go to hong kong so until then if you miss one or two or three videos uh, you'll see me in hong kong next time so thank you so much for watching and happy shooting Click, click, click.